Canada versus Australia. And this could be the start of maybe more of these matches to come, even in this short tournament, as both of these teams are already guaranteed as a result of their two victories so far to be going through to the semifinals. And that, of course, in day four. And how they will fare, it will set up for which match they will be playing for, which medal they will be contending for at these Paralympic Games. Australia, by right of their goals for and against, find themselves currently sitting in number one position. Canada, two. Great Britain, three. And the host nation, Brazil, now they have all played three games, so they have established themselves as third and fourth, respectively. These two nations, well, it's still to be decided. Where will they finish, first or second? These are the referees to take charge of this one. It is the American Darren Roberts in charge on your right side, and the British official Brian Ward are the two to take the helm on what could be potentially, depending on how things work out on this one, also the prelude to what could be a gold medal matchup. So Japan and USA, they battled. They are already in the semifinals as well, but it's now time for the introduction of the athletes into the arena. This arena will fill up. It's the way Brazil have been. These fans throughout the entirety of the Paralympic Games, they come late and they move from venue to venue. And there you just saw Roddy Bat making his way out arguably the number one. This, of course, is their captain, and that is Ryan Scott, the first Australian. Jason Lees, and a new player, Ben Fossett, but this is Roddy Bat. He is a real threat. And there, of course, is running mate, Chris Bond. And that is Josh Hose there, at number four. And Cameron Carr, an established member of the side as well. So we talk about this Aussie group. They are the reigning gold medal champions from London in those Paralympics four years ago. They equally are the 2014 world champions. They beat the Canadians in both of those matchups. So it really is a clash of the titans as these two settle up in the final preliminary group match for here in Group A. And that their coach, Brad Jepperly, looking on. And now for the Canadians to be introduced out into the arena. So Hirschfield, their captain alongside Patrice Dagenet. There you see Hirschfield, number 10. And then they, of course, go back to numerical order. There's Ian Chen. He's been a part of the side since Sydney. That was when it was officially classified as a sport. You just saw Whitehead go by. He really, if he can get going and be at the top of his game, that one-two punch with him and Zach Fidel. There he is, the big maple tree. And there, Cody Caldwell, he had a great game in day two. He helped the Canadians to secure a victory. Their real first test, though, was against Great Britain, and that was in day two. They had to go to extra time, and they beat Great Britain by one. And there, Zach Medell is the Canadian superstar, the last one to be introduced out there, always playing with energy and a smile on his face. It's now time for the national anthems for both of these nations. Senhoras e senhores, o hino da Austrália.
So eight teams come to compete for medals in Rio in the wheelchair rugby. Two groups of four, as you've already seen the tables, and equally the hands being shooken there at the center floor, at the center line, and these two teams are ready and rolling. It is the Canadians in red, as you see, who will take a moment of calm with their bench before this opening tip-off. It's tough for them to keep as calm as possible. Somebody is obviously going to suffer the defeat today. And they all want to be number one, but it's about peaking at the right time. And that's a gold medal match that's two days away. But make no mistake of it, we have already seen in this tournament how much it means to finish number one. In the other group, it had to go to overtime. And the calm before the storm as you look in the eyes of the Australians. This is the Canadian lineup. Beletsky is the lone female in this matchup between these two sides. Right through, Byron Green, Michael Whitehead, one to be looking for. He's the big target. Cody Caldwell might have to carry the mail today, but it's right through this entire lineup. Zach Medell will do most of the heavy lifting for Canada. Kevin Orr, he has been here before. He is suited and booted and ready. This is all business. This is now in day three of a five-day tournament. This is pivotal for the Australians. This lineup, well, it starts with Riley Bat, and then, of course, the next one is running mate, Chris Bond, number 10. But Matt Lewis came in in replacement of Riley Bat and gave him a little bit of respite in their last matchup that they had that in day two and against Brazil. So Brad Dubberly has got some choices to make and some options in how he wants to put his combinations together. Wheelchair rugby allows four players on the field of play. Caldwell, Hurstfield, Samard, and Medell will start for Canada. And for Australia, it is Riley Bat, the captain, Ryan Scott, Edmondson, and Harrison. So this, a different look as well from what we have seen. Every match has been a different starting five for Australia. These two are set and ready to buckle in. Medell and Bat up against each other. You see, actually, with smiles on their face, but they will get going. They know when to peak at the right times. Riley Bat with control. And he's looking just to release himself from what is immediately Canadian pressure. They've locked him up. He will get out of there, though, but only for a moment. This is great from the Canadians. He releases it inside and spinning back around. Edmondson gives it to Bat. He works. He is controlled. I don't know if he's going to get there. And will they count it? They're suggesting as if he had contact on his arm, but the first score will go to Riley Bat. He's across the line with both his wheels. So they have to score inside those two posts, as you can see. It's eight meters across. And if you dislodge those posts that are only there temporarily, and there for safety, they are soft in their construction, but equally rigid as they must hold that line tight. There is Zach Bedell, his opening score to level things at one. Roddy Bat will get across this line in under 12 seconds. That is the allocation. He can speed with the best of them. His power game is also ferocious. He has a couple now, both for Australia. And Mattel takes that long feed. 
He'll just missed it there, but as quick as you can say, they like that home run pass, and these two will go back and forth at each other. Vidal coming in, prevents it. They're looking to go to bat, but they take him away early. This is good chess right now by the Canadians trying to control the Australians, but bad will come out. He's got a hat trick. Of course, these two sides know each other well. The two major trophies on offer in the last four years, the Paralympic Games, that gold medal match between these two nations, and Australia victorious and equally the World Championships in 2014, but Medell and Bat both have a triple play of goals to open up proceedings. Good contact. Again, it's an aggressive defense from Canada. Inside, well taken and received there. That's Andrew Harrison who's got the second scoring goal. He has one and he shares the responsibilities right now with Bat on the board. This is Caldwell. He has to turn back. Bat catches him up. Medell right through. A little crevice, though. He finds some daylight, and he seeks it, and he scores. So he has taken all four of the Canadian goals so far. It's a good move by Bat, just to slow himself up a little bit. Look at him carve and root his way through this Canadian defense as he chops in another one. That's his fourth. Right away from Adele. He'll break into open spaces. And there, again, back to level. It started with the opening goal by Australia, and they have just traded back and forth. A little bit of deception there from Bat. He attempts the effort of a back pass. This one he just puts right in the hands of number 14, Edmondson. And he gets his first goal of the match. That's the handoff. And it doesn't matter if you go forwards or backwards. Caldwell was going to send it. But he holds on to it. Medell. Has to think a couple different directions. He's going to have to hustle to get across this line. He does. He gets away from Bat. He sends him into a little bit of a spin in doing so. And Mattel, 22 years of age. And Riley Bat, 27. They very much are the faces of wheelchair rugby now for the respective nations. Caldwell locking up. He comes in. It's Bat with this ball. So literally, he's going to take his bat and ball, and he's about to go home, but no, taken away. It is Medell who stops him on one side, but he has... Enough to make it happen the opposite side, but you see the indication from Brian Ward, the official. And it was the Australians calling a timeout just before Riley Back can cross that line. And so nothing wrong with that. They will get the ball back. It's Ryan Scott that felt as though they were running against time, and he made that decision. So a 30-second timeout utilized by Australia. And this defense right now is matched up well from Canada. These two sides, they know it will be tight. And we've seen that in this tournament already. Riley Bat is going into a difficult place. He's found more room on the open side. And he's done it again. He's got five 
They've got three different scores right now, the Australians. It's just Medell doing it for Canada thus far. Canada equally execute the timeout. And across a couple substitutions will come into the match. It's Whitehead and Bilecki. The one lone female player that Canada has. That, of course, the wheelchair basketball team, the women's wheelchair basketball, watching front row into Whitehead. He's the 40-year-old, and really, he can control a match with his size, his strength. He's a great passing option. And both he and Adele out here now together. Good movement from Adele. He shows his speed. He's across the line. And he has taken everything so far. And he seems to take it with ease in his stride. Never looks particularly flummoxed or panicked by things. That really is an indication of his pedigree. But there's a foul coming here. It's going to go against Hirschfield. He'll sit down for a minute. And it will be less than that. So the numerical advantage now for Australia. And with this opportunity, just a quick briefing. The players on the floor, they all have a classification. Each one of them, it is really assessed by their numerical value. The lower level of function with the lowest numerical value, which is the 0.5, and the highest level of function up to a 3.5. To the four players, they can't exceed eight. Now you see Chris Bond out here. He's one of the two on his Australian side. He and Riley Bat, they are the killer bees. And the money man, he is steely with those blue eyes, Chris Bond. He takes his first possession and he drops it across that line. So back to four on four. Into Medell, spins, looks to see just where Samard is and he's Quick enough to the mark to level this one at eight. Bond is moving well through the middle of the floor. He's an option. He picks that up in flow with the right hand. To the backside, the good screening effort from Bat. It opens it up for Bond. These two together. They know exactly where they want to be on the floor. They've taken the lead again. They'll have nine. The speed from Medell a little too much. He's got it to burn as he blows Bond away. And he levels it again. All nine of them so far belong to Medell for Canada. Bat controlled for a moment or two. Is he going to run out of time here? It's tight. He does just get it across. And that was really on the mark. As you saw the clock there, down to 28 seconds, it looked like. And good sense from Bat to get it across. Up to Bond, who gets the double digits first. So 12 seconds to advance it, 40 overall. And he was right within his allowance. It was as close as you're gonna get. Quickly, the advancement all the way up to Samard, who takes it. That's the first additional score to Medell. So two now, he has one, and Medell, nine. Up and over the top, it's well taken by Bond. He just runs shotgun with Riley Bat, and he coming in, he's picked up four goals now, Chris Bond. Patient and deliberate. The feed, and it's taken by Caldwell. So now some distribution through this lineup, three different scores for Canada. There's four now already on the board for the Australians.
Look at Bat explode. He's going to go right through the middle of it. He takes his chance when it's there. Makes no mistake. And again, he nudges ahead on the score line. That's a half dozen for him. Australia with the one goal lead. Oh, they've driven past it. And this is an opening now for the Australians to take advantage of. Up and the lollipop pass into the lap of Chris Bond. And they've increased their margin to two. A long pass. It's from Caldwell up to Medell. And you see Medell. He can get that wheelchair into top flight in a hurry. He's on the double digits. So every wheelchair obviously a little bit different depending on the characteristics of the athlete. The higher pointed players, the higher classification, they generally want a more mobile chair because they do the scoring. And this again is Bond, an example of that. He's got that crossbar as well on his chair. And he puts that in his basket and he rolls. So this two goal margin as we come into the last section of this opening period. Medell gets past Bat. That's the one attempt. That's going to be their best thrust at it. He scores and across the line. Chips away at this Australian lead. Hirschfield takes it away. You heard the tire. It popped there, actually. And that happens all the time in wheelchair rugby. And he immediately gets the support from his bench. They pop it, they lock it, off he rolls. So inside this last minute now, it's about management of the last possession and the likely last score of the opening eight minutes. Riley Bat has forced his way and he forces the Canadian defender to leave. So they're just going to count the score rather than penalizing Hirschfield. He's had a couple already. And Medell trying to get across this line so they have the certainty of at least another possession before the first period expires. In this back half, Bond tries to take out Medell, who's shadowing Roddy Bat. And they will try to utilize as much of this clock as they can. Circling and waiting. So just a little bit of a disparity, about three and a half seconds, the difference between. And he might very well execute a timeout here, but. He elects not to. He's going to keep rolling and try and score. He powers his way through. He's forced across the line. And they're up again by two. Riley Bat, very patient, very experienced. And he also knows when to strike. The lob, it's from Medell. It'll be one bounce up to Samard. And it looks as though he's suffered an, an injury there. Or that he's just kind of bit his tongue potentially he was jolted by that hit and it is of course now going across that's Ryan Scott the captain for Australia so they'll be down a player there's only a second on the clock and it was the hand in the face more so than anything else they're gonna have to work real quick here our Canada one second officially so the clock doesn't start until the ball has been received inbounds They've got a chance with the extra, but it's going to go to Whitehead is the option. It's lobbed up. It's Belitsky who tries to get a touch of it, and it will just slip from her grasp. So Australia have taken the lead in the opening eight minutes. 
they have a 16 to 14 lead over Canada. And this the final match in Group A play in the wheelchair rugby. The defensive fouls, one more for Canada. Just the one turnover, and that was indicating equally that little bit of possession. They take that opening score, don't they, Australia? And from there, they had just kept themselves nudged ahead. And then that little bit of a mistake. Just that one turnover, and they take advantage of it, and that's where it puts them with the two-goal lead. Australia up by two. It'll be the Canadians with the inbound. And already they are locking each other up. That's Whitehead with Quan and the physical contact right there at the center circle. Well, that's key out there. Whitehead, Medell, and the inbound from Hirschfield. And Medell opens up the second period, a very easy score. They pace each other, these two sides. They know that this will come down to the business end right at the end of four periods of play. Good box out. Bond has gone long. Can they get a touch on it? Whitehead with the long reach. It's going to be Bond, though, that plucks it right off the tree. Bat will follow up, and he will taste it as they go across the line for another one. Great ball support, and equally the timing, perfect. Medell has come back, and you see Medell in the forecourt. He will look to apply pressure. Is trying to lock up Roddy Bat, Whitehead, and Hirschfield doing the double team. The Australian captain, Scott, gets it into Bond. Bond's going to drive it. What a block from Naz Erdem on Whitehead. And he benefits from it all the way the length of the floor. Another score from Bond. He's got seven. Whitehead takes the duties this time. The offload, the feed forward. Hirschfield with two bounces into his lap and another Canadian score. They keep it within one. Wileski doing a nice job trying to control the wheelchairs, but Bond and Bat again show the speed game and they just roll into the open floor and it is difficult to control them both. Constantly surging, always dangerous. And they, right at the height of their performance in this sport, Bat is 27, 30 years old is Bond. Medell, the fake, look at that pass to Whitehead. They will count it. They tried to shove Whitehead across the line before he receives it, but he holds strong. His weight, his size, his advantage. He anchors just ahead of going across the line and he receives that ball. And now Canada have utilized some pressure 
on the Australians. They force the timeout call. And so an adjustment to the lineup. And the inbound will come to Canada. So they turn it over in that sequence. And it's Caldwell who has the duties. And that's what Whitehead can bring to the action. He is a great disruption. He's a very solid target and gives presence to this Canadian lineup. Caldwell into Medell. Samard and Hirschfield as well. It's not looking as possible from that side. Both Bond and Bat are reacting to him like a video game. And they now are looking to come up the cross block. This around the end. The pass, that's a great play. And Caldwell receives it. He's going to score, but I think it's a defensive violation. We'll see exactly what the assessment is. And they will, in fact, allow it. It's a penalty goal, defensive foul against Raleigh Bat. Nonetheless, it's level at 19. And he's popped his tire just as quick, and you see him pointing to it. Bat needs a new one. And you see how wobbly it is. That's actually just the inflatable. But no time to repair it, just replace it. And a couple substitutions. That's Jaden Warren and equally Jason Lees waiting on the sidelines for Australia. They could get to 21st and take the lead again. It's going to be Bat. He just carves himself inside that left post. And not to be denied, he has got himself his ninth goal of the match. Long and strong. Up for Samart. He'll get it just in time, and number 15 for Canada. Gets his second goal. They have five different scorers now, the Canucks. For so long, it was just Medell. I think the opening nine goals for Canada belonged to him. And then, finally, some distribution. They're starting to vary that now. Bat is hooked. They've got him in the wheelchairs. He was right in the vice grip of a Canadian clutch. But this is pressure, and it's mounting on them. And because of Bat being under siege there from the Canadians, they utilize a timeout. Jaden Warren on the floor now for Australia. He's got the ball. He's got the moves. And Bond has come off. Bat is still out there. He'll collect this one. And he'll just easily deposit it down for another score. He's the double digits on 10. Caldwell into Hirschfield. A little bit. Sputtering to get started, but this is Samard right over the shoulder. He wraps it up. It's safely another Canadian score. Level at 21. Samard now with a hat trick. And that a great pass all the way long. And equally, it's about the bouncing, isn't it? The timing of its arrival. Bat has to work hard. He's got Medell to navigate here. Should be able to see this through, but a little bit of a drag on him there from Samard. He just puts the anchor out. That long chair can strike, it can hold. And Medell looks to shadow him. 
Hard work for Roddy Bat, but he is not afraid of that. He takes it across again, and Australia with the lead once more. So powerful is core strength. And so determined, Kevin Orr looking on. Have they turned it over? Timeout. The Canadians benefit from it. It looked to have created a turnover. And officially, it was Caldwell who called the 30-second timeout for Canada. So a smart move. They look to be in trouble. The pressure on Canada. They've not had that lead as yet. Whitehead returns with Bilecki. Lees, Warren, Fawcett, and Bat at long play. Medell is going to have to hunt this one down, and he's just the angle. Gets away from him, and he'll be frustrated by that. So will Whitehead. And they'll just have to work with it. There, the French player. That is Riyad Salem. He really is a entertainer in this game. So distinctive. A dual sport Paralympian. Bat will take it, but he's got Medell right on him right away. And he's spinning, but he looks like he's in mud over there. And contact on the arm. Whitehead, I think, going to be assessed with it. And so this almost a certainty with four on three for Australia to convert with the extra player. Roddy Pat controls this inbound. He's just waiting, making sure his teammates are in the right position. He's across the line. He has done it again. And so Whitehead will come out. Roddy Bat now has a dozen. And they're ahead by two, the Aussies. Quick inbound play. Whitehead is going to have to work hard to get away from the couple Australians waiting for him. He does so. He's got a two-on-one here against Bat. And a block. He'll take the backside. He's across the line for a 22nd Canadian goal. That's his second. Look at Warren go. Warren is 22 years of age. He knows where the Australian bread is buttered. He puts it into the hands of Bat. And there, now a Baker's dozen for Roddy Bat. Good off look there, trying to get the Australian to go the opposite way. Right here. This really is fantastic one-on-one -on -one play. He stays inside the right post. And Medell just skids away across that line for his 15th goal. Jaden Warren keeps it alive. He has to bounce it or pass it every 10. Bat holding on the rails there. The offload out to Jason Lees. He's got it in position, and he scores. It's a new score for Australia. And obviously, that's his first. Boletsky, that's a hot pass over the shoulder. She grabs it into Medell. He comes underneath this defense. Bat can't get to him in time. As he gets to the crossroads, just a little too quickly for him. Medell has taken it across, and he sliced it within one, this lead for Australia. Fourteen and a half thousand is the capacity of Carioca number one arena, and we're pretty much at about 12,000 now. It could fill up 
by halftime. That's the way the movement inside the Olympic Park has been during these Paralympic Games. Everybody wants a piece of everything. They want to see all the sports. This a real showcase of a pair of the best in this one. Australia utilized a timeout. And with 2.28 remaining in this opening half, they want to keep asserting themselves with a two-goal lead. What it does is it puts a little bit of extra pressure on Canada to try to make a special play, and that will either work out or it will create a vulnerability that the Australians will take advantage of. A great position to be in, up by two. As the Australians want to turn the screw here now and tighten the grip on this game, and it will be Bond into bat. Too much room as soon as they create that block there. Nobody could get to him. And he doesn't waste any time taking advantage of space that he sees. Medell protects that ball well. The offload all the way up. It's going to be Caldwell, who's got it across the line. So that's his second of the match. Very measured right now, very calmly being delivered. Both of these nations know that they're capable of winning this match, trying to hand it into Bond. And it's Medell that has just left the floor there. Are they going to penalize him or are they going to allow the goal? It looks as though they will. They'll take him off the court for one minute or less. And I can guarantee you it will be less than that. The Australians with the player advantage. They might try to manage this 40 seconds, though, on the game clock. And as predicted, it's Bond into Roddy Bat. The Canadians aren't going to overly assert themselves. It's gonna, not going to allow the Australians to do entirely what they want across this line. It's Roddy Bat, and that's a little bit more about respect there. Not trying to get into a game of chess as yet. This will come down into the fourth period. The advancing play. For Caldwell, he takes it in full flow. What a grab. Bond won't catch him. And a great advancement, the feed from Adele. Caldwell able to run right with it. He's got a hat trick now as well for Canada. It's over the top for Bond. No Canadian is going to catch him, I don't think, from here. Medell. Might just get a touch. Oh, I got it. He got him. Upended him completely. And I'm not sure whether Bond just slowed down there or whether Medell just threw the afterburners on. But it looked as though Bond was off and running. He did. He got casual. And Medell was having none of it. He dropped him like a stone. But we will look at it. I think officially they will give credit to Bond. Well, they've got timeout for his equipment there. What What is, it's going to be a penalty goal, and it's a defensive foul, so they do give them the 28th goal officially. So from behind, Vidal again, he's upended Bond. And Bond is coming out second best on the last two exchanges. But it's the extra goal they have on the board. They're up by two. That's allowing them to control things as we come to the closing stages of this opening half. Great strength from the young Medell. You see him celebrating that one a little bit as well. Every moment of a one-on-one -on -one competition against these athletes so well established. They take their appreciation of it and equally they love to celebrate it too. It's all in the name of these players wanting to be the best. They want the success of the gold. They want the acknowledgement, that peer respect, most importantly. 
Oh, he's jammed his way through. So clever is Medell. He almost makes himself half the width coming through both Bond and Bat. They're going to try and force him across. He's managing this one inside the post. And he did well there. He just skims that post. He's got to be mindful of that. And that's what Australia were trying to do, trying to force him beyond that eight meter distance. So inside this last minute here, once he gets turned sideways, he's in a little bit of trouble, particularly as they keep pushing and just slices inside that post. You see Bat, he has other thoughts about it. But it was allowed. Chris Bond with control. There you see the distribution of the scoring. Overwhelming Medell carrying the load right now. And this is Bond. He grabs another Australian score inside this last minute of this half. He's got nine now. And the pressure for Canada to try to just get it within one. Whitehead into Medell. That's a soft pass. Almost looked like he was going to grip it and rip that one for a distance. And just found that skyhook pass inside to Medell, who is going to burn some time. That ball almost looked as though it bounced away from him. He's right into the snarl of this Australian pack. Bond is going to hold him on that far post. Inside to Whitehead, what a play it is. The Canadians will cash it in late in the second period. It looked like they were playing with fire. They don't get burned on that occasion. There's still four seconds left, though, for Australia to do something with it. And Bat will just do exactly that right out of the park, as that will be the end of the opening 16. Australia have kept themselves ahead, but ultimately Canada, in that second period, they take it 14-13. Overall, though, at halftime, in the opening 16, it's the Australians up by one. 29-28 over their Canadian counterparts. The two turnovers for Canada. The defensive fouls as well, 5-2. to two. And really that is the only slight difference. And also the one goal on the board. They're going to need to force the issue a little bit here, of course, in this second half. But it's just a little bit that balance point. And we'll see how they strike it and the combinations they put together. It's now a chance for the in-house entertainment team to put it on and enjoy a little bit of a break for five minutes before we get back and ready for the second half to come.
Well, if it's any omen, it was the Canadians who won the halftime dance competition. But they find themselves down, entering this third period by one. You wouldn't want to bet on who is going to take this one. The winner will finish top of Group A. Match 12 overall in the wheelchair rugby. It's the Australians who will inbound. And it gets loud in here in anticipation of where this match will finish up. It's Riley Bat who does the battering ram job right across the line like he's in a mobile tank. He is built to last. Zach Medell. He's had an easy go of it right here. The road runner for Canada. And he just turns back and reroutes. It's a quick score to respond and to get it back within one. Oh, he's come right into the teeth of it. That was the Canadian defensive jaws is the offload going to go to bat it's a one bouncer right into his clutches he's done well to circle the wagons almost gets his wagon unhooked there with the ball that was Hurtfield I think going in trying to pluck it but he'll score again he knew it's close and he found a way great moment there between him and Medell oh it's over the top as the no look Whitehead Puts it up to Medell. What a great pass. He knew he had him out there in front. And he just launched it. Skyward. But he had those Australian hands in which to navigate. And maybe a little bit of fortune on that. They're not going to want to do that in the dying moments of this one. Australia have always led. Canada have not yet. They get themselves into a convoy there. Bat coming this side. Oh, Whitehead just couldn't get himself forward. He makes that slippery move. He's got more moves than a bucket of worms. And I'm not much of a fisherman, but I know how very capable this man is. He can make it happen in a phone booth. It's across to Whitehead. And the line is breached. It's his fourth goal for Mike Whitehead. And if he can get his engine revving, he can be the difference maker. He's often out there when the ball has been turned over or disrupted. Medell gets in the way of Edmondson here. He's got to come back around. And they're into Bat's hands. Boletsky with the cross block. Whitehead with the body pressure on him. Which way will he go? And he's called timeouts. They have 11 seconds, and I'm not sure if the Australian didn't just leave the field there. And we'll just see officially whether he got that timeout called before they did. It is officially recognized to Roddy Bat for 30. And that was a break because the Australian had left the field to play in the offensive scoring area there, went right out the end. So you've seen a couple slim discretions offered. So it is to both teams. You saw the Medell score where he does just touch that post, but they do allow it. Hirschfield is in. And Caldwell. And Samard with Medell, but Riley Bat starts things off again. So they take that score and smartly bank it. Look at Medell, though, waste no time. The shortest line between two points is his wheelchair generally. He can get trucking down the Trans Canada. He converts it. It's back within one, but they've got to find a way to get a turnover from the Australians. And that has been tough to come by. It's a little bit like finding a needle in a haystack. Up and over the top, into the possession. This now for Edmondson. He panics to get it. 
He, I think, calls a timeout right away, but no, he gets it back. And I think he was just trying to get his hands around it. That was like the crown jewels, him trying to recover those right there. And right through, I think he's got both wheels officially across. Roddy Bat giving credit for the 34th Australian goal. Madell will get this linking play. He with a little bit of flair on this one, all the way up to Samard. He's going to hit hard here. He backs away. Bat just is trying to get in there with that hand. This is relentless right now. And they've come up a little bit trumps, the Canadians. They were backing away. And they were down an alley that they didn't really want to be in. And Samard, oh, they got lucky. As I thought that went off of Medell, a break for Canada. Inbound, quickly, it's converted by the superstar of this Canadian team, Zach Medell, number 33 is his number, and number 21 has his goal total so far. And they've turned it over. So this, the moment they've been waiting for, in this third period, and they've had to be patient. It will be Caldwell with the responsibility in front of the Canadian bench to get this inbound. Medell has two Australians breathing down his neck. When will he go? They're being counted in. Good play into Samard. It's rather Hirschfield. He's going to protect it. He's backing away. He's done two spins to get away from Bat. He calls a timeout and a smart utilization of it. It was Bat behind him, forcing him out of play. So he was able to get the timeout, was Caldwell. It's inbounded to Medell. He's in a little bit of a corner here. He's got straight up against them, Roddy Bat. This, a good offload to Caldwell, which will give some space, a good block there from Samard. And a backing play across the line from Hurstfield. That is a real moment of execution. Remember that. It could be a turning point in this match right there. Roddy Bat has got himself into the Canadian grip here again. He finds a way out. Bond is already into open spaces. Medell, they would like to just hit him just for fun. That was Bond. He just avoided it at the last second. And again, the Australians in front. Roddy Bat delivers the duties. Caldwell with some speed. He's going to have to work. This clock is counting, though, against them. It's into Medell. He's in a tight place. He's also got Raleigh Bat crawling over his lap. And he's been put back upright there. And he's going to get a penalty, is Bat, for that play. So four against three now. The Canadians with the power play. And that's the way he plays the game. It was a tight place there for Medell to receive it. He's got it now. And the Australians are just going to concede this score. And it's on the board. Level at 35. So just waiting for confirmation of that. Because the official scoring system has it at 35. Still waiting for the graphic for it to appear. But this is a timeout for Australia. And there, finally, the 35th goal goes up for Canada. That's the leveler. Going back and doing my math, making sure here. But it is official. Dead level at 3.53 remaining in this third period.
It's long, it's over the top. It's into Riley Bat. He gets a little rerouting there from Zach Medell, but he cashes it in again. That's his 22nd goal. And Australia, again, knows ahead. A double spin out. And then this, a battle between two of the best. Bouncing it to keep the 10 seconds of possession alive. Caldwell wraps it. He's going to go over the top. He elects not to because Bat was going to take it and try to intercept it before it gets to Samard. The cross block from Samard. And double B's on him. Can they turn it over? What a play into Caldwell. Make no mistake, that is a world-class strike. When you have Chris Bond and Riley Bat in your face and you've got to find a man and you're running out of time and equally the angle is tight, well, who are you going to call? It's Zach Medell. It is Riley Bat again, though. The answer right back, and he shows no mercy as he will, stroke for stroke, just get ahead. He's got 23. Medell's got 22. And these two are just in a tug of war as to who can score more. Medell with some space, advances it to Smart. Bat's going to knock that one out of the air. Fortunately for Canada, it is last touch by him. We've seen it before where Bat can do that and then catch it. Sticks to his hands like he's got stick him on him. But not this time. It gets away. And the inbound still for the Canadians. They will utilize a timeout here now. And the Canadian Quartet return to the floor. They will inbound from the near side. It's Caldwell. And of course, you know the target. Most likely to Medell. Samar does a lap of the track. He, the lead runner trying to provide the cross block. This Medell is going to find the angle. He levels it again. And this is feeling just like the match that we have seen earlier today. The top four nations in the world. There really is very little to choose between them as Australia again will convert in this battle within the entire game between Mattel and Riley Bat. He's gonna go the distance. It's the first to a 2-4 pack. It's Riley Bat with now his 24th goal. The release up for Samard. He's across the line. And this, his fourth. The roadblock from the Canadians attempted. It's up to Bond, though. He's got a pack trying to control him equally. Bond inside the bat, and they, again, Go ahead by one. And dead level in this third period. Ten goals apiece. It was 14 to 13 for Canada in the second period. And we started the opening eight with a 16-14 margin. That trouble, that a play I think works out. And watch this. I thought that Mattel had turned around and knocked that off of Riley Bat. And that's a very unusual and unorthodox play but i thought he executed it as riley bat comes across we'll watch it closely and that's a tough call against the canadians because bat was out of control Mattel just before the line puts it off him and that's a tough call so two minutes exactly remaining in this third period 
And of course, the referees don't get the benefit of a replay. And it was a, such a smart, executed decision by Zach Medell. You don't see it very often. And I think maybe the element of surprise, thinking as though it was going to be the Canadians that last touched it. And upon review, it could be debated. Good contact here. And a couple Canucks arrive at the scene. It's Bond who's going to go out long. And with this score here, they go ahead by two. And equally remember that moment as well. Bond on double digits. And he runs shotgun to Roddy Bat. Medell's going to win this race, though. And he comfortably cruises across the line immediately with directions for his teammate in behind. It's within one. Raleigh Bat, a powerhouse, tries to get through Hirschfield and Boletsky. It's Hirschfield, I think, that's hooked onto him. And providing a good anchor. Naz Erdem tries to provide the key to unlock that defensive grip. And Riley Bat again benefits from it. He takes it across for his 26th. And again, that two-goal lead has been established by the Aussies. Medell cuts through the two of them. He can offload it to Whitehead, and he'll take it across the big maple tree. That's going to be his fifth goal of the match. And there's no need having to power through if you can just make that passing game. And that's what Medell decides to do right there. He's trying to track bat the screen against him. Good job by Hirschfield. They slow things up for a moment. Bond has got a triple play of Canadians on him. He's going to try to moonwalk his way out of this one. Inside the last minute of this third period, Whitehead throws up the construction fence. And they're going to contact. It's going to be Whitehead, they're suggesting, gets the contact. We'll just look at the official call. It's a penalty goal. It's a defensive foul. They allow it. And it's awarded to Australia. Up and over. Over the top from Adele. He gets it just in time. You saw the stretch from Riley Pat. Couldn't get to it. And they're going to try to utilize this time here. At the end of this third period. Patiently. He's not sure entirely where Riley Pat is. The offload for Adele. Smart play to come in for Hirschfield. And if Canada, of course, want to get this at least within one, Medell is trying to shunt himself forward. And it's contact on the arm, so that works out okay. They got 5.9 remaining in this third period. But it only works out okay if they convert quickly. Four against three. The Canadians the advantage, and the goal line is their target in under six seconds. It's going to work. Bat against Medell into Whitehead. They've done it and across the line, 2.1. They need to keep an eye on Bond coming out of that penalty box. Long and up to him. Erdem possibly an option. Medell will just control that with both hands up. And again, we are right at the cusp of a classic between these two nations. At three-quarter time, the Aussies up by one, 42-41 over Canada. Defensive fouls, a few more, one more turnover, one steal. And you get a sense that if Canada could get a steal, Another turnover, that could be it in the fourth period to come. Wouldn't be surprised if we're going to go to extra time again in this one.
24 minutes have been played already. And just the one goal, the difference between these two nations. It's a return of the gold medal match from four years ago. But this one at the moment is still in the preliminary round. But don't tell these players. Every time they face each other, they want to be the winners. It's in the Whitehead. He holds it up, and he's looking for a target. He's found exactly his man. It'll be Zach Medell to open things. And the possession arrow, it comes at a good time for Canada to get that opening inbound. As they have leveled things at 42. And Medell continues to provide the offense. He's got 25 goals. Bond up against Boletsky. He reroutes and thinks about how he wants to engage this Canadian defense now. He's got himself into a corner a little bit over there. He's been intercepted, but only momentarily, from Hirschfield. And Roddy Bat, he just pounds the line straight through again. 27 for him. And the Australians again in the lead, 43 to 42. It's up and over. It's placed into a great area. Medell, so smart, uses his body to shield the line. Bond thought he was going to have a sniff of it. He took it away from him. It's another Canadian score. Bond quickly finding an angle to get away from the Canadians. They're all around him, but haven't been able to get quite close enough. He will do it right across the line again. So much body control, and he weaves and winds his way across for an 11th score. So deep is this Australian lineup. Matt Lewis, who's a 3.5 classification, would give Roddy Bat a break. He's not been utilized as yet, as Medell will level at fours all the way across the board. And this, nobody knows how it will finish up. The Canadians have not enjoyed the lead, though, in this match as yet. Bond just churning butter. And again, it's another sweet Australian score. He's got a dozen. Whitehead, it looks like he's working through. Oh, he's been upended. And they're going to turn it over. Riley Bat in time. Hirschfield was running out of an angle and equally time as hunting him from behind was Roddy Bat. And that's one of those turnovers. We've not seen many of them in this match. That could be just a little notch on the belt for Australia. They'll go ahead here, you expect, with Bond now asserting himself, but it's going to be Bat who rolls out of the decoy. And he comes around the end. Medell's with him. He's got the blocking formation. Have they come back, though, Canada, and made this more difficult than was initially expected for the Australians? They've held firm, and they forced Roddy Bat out again. He's going to come around the backside, though. It's not for long. It's just a momentary delay. As 28 goals now for the highly regarded and accepted as maybe the world's best player in this sport. And this man with the ball right there, well, he equally will have something to say about that before this tournament is done. Reaching in is Bond, and I do believe they'll just allow this to be a Canadian score. And it will be recorded as a 45th goal for Canada. It's Medell again in charge. Bond breaks free, and he converts it.
He's got 13, and he has been providing exactly what you expect from these two. That's been popped up. It's been turned over. And it's a little bit too much of a hot potato coming into Zach Medell. And this proving decisive here. They've converted it once more, have Australia. And these last two sequences between Hurtfield being forced out of play, that pass into Mazzell in back-to-back -back possessions has just opened up this game for Australia. They're now up by three. Every minute of this match, Riley Bat has been on the floor. Equally the same for Zach Medell. But it's just a couple little blemishes for the Canadians have contributed to the opportunity converted by the Australians. And what a Paralympic Games it has been. The second most successful with 1.8 million tickets being sold for the entire competition. And we're over 14,000 in here watching this one as Zach Medell will look around and see just what his options are. He knows he's going to have to pull a trick or two out of his bag. Down by three. He's to the long side. He cuts it to two. And Bond immediately has it. And it's in. Oh, they plucked it. Right there, the Canadians will take one back. So this, an exchange that could equally have a part to tell in the final story. Oh, that was good. He took it right off the tree. Medell converts it, and it's back within one. So that's how quickly it can turn. What a play for the Canadians. They're looking for Bond. They've got Bat in a tough spot there, but he just rides the rails and he comes out of trouble. Mattel is going to get hit. He accepts it, and Bat will convert it. That is going to be his 30th goal of 49 for Australia. Here comes Mattel. He didn't want to blink an eye because he comes right back to score, and it's within one. Canada are going to have to just make a slight adjustment, though, to how they apply some pressure to the Australians. So here we are again, twisting and turning towards the end of 32 minutes. And that is only the 428 remaining in that. We could be going to more. And you see the body language from Dubberly, the Australian coach. He's talking about controlling and protecting that ball. Nazardum is the 46-year-old, and he will be utilized here at a crucial time. He's a 0.5 classification. So his strength to be able to hold on to that ball, he needs to get his arms around it. This is Riley Pat. He's come into a collision. They've turned it over, and Canada picked it up. This is now getting... Oh, so interesting. A triple play of Australians against Medell. He has been here before, though. He has got the key for this lock. It's up and over. It's into Hurstfield, right into the breadbasket. And oh, he's buttered another one. It's 49 apiece. And ooh, that tastes sweet right now for Canada, as they have never enjoyed the lead in this matchup. But here, just before the half century point, we have seen how crucial that is in this particular sport. Who gets the 51st have generally had the nod. And it will be Australia that take the 5-0 on the board. The inbound. The ref is counting. They need to move quick here, Canada. 
It's going to go into Samard. He's got Bond on him, and he's equally got Bat behind. This could be trouble. It's going to get into Medell. Medell's got to move quick to get across this line. He does. And the brakes are thrown on it. It's back to level pegging. They have shared 100 points so far. It feels just like it did earlier today. As here we go again. As Riley Bat with a moment of a little bit of calm before who knows how this will finish. Converts the 31st goal. Caldwell, the one two. Caldwell has to just take a moment there to buckle his shoe, and here he comes. He's got bat, and he's got a problem, but he's got the over the head top pass and right into the lap of the golden boy, Zach Medell. And Medell will just go ahead and rally bat now with 32 goals. Oh my. I think Erdem was going to call a timeout there. He doesn't execute it. And this is contact, I believe, from Hirschfield on bat. He'll come across and serve this penalty. How hot it is when the bright lights are on you. Rally bat is fully drenched with sweat out there. Bond gets it in to his running mate. Medell is going to have to get moving. Bond is in open floor and four against three. It's a formality in a second, but he's going to just try to take a few more precious seconds off of this clock. He looks up, he sees just what's available to him. And it's hot work, as you can see, both of these players with the full shaved head. They have carried the load today for Australia, and that's what they have done. They did it four years ago to win gold in London. They have brought 46 goals today for Australia. Hirschfield, it's in to Caldwell. Caldwell's gonna go. They're gonna let him loose. And he will rack it up for Canada. The 52nd point on the board. It's Caldwell's fifth officially. And point it right now. The next mistake will probably determine the result. Roddy Bat now back upright again. You see, they have to come across and dry up that spot where he fell. That only makes sense. You see it dripping right off his nose. They've got two Canadians on him. They've done well here, putting pressure into a box, though. And they're trying to just unhook it and get it out of his lap. It's Medell, the last line of defense. Bond has already gone long, and he gets it. It's a 53rd for Australia. They're back in front. <laughs> Medell's the prime target. He's got the killer bees up against them. And they are all over him, like white on rice. But look at him cut loose. The tight angle, he just holds it on that line and he wraps it like his baby he's got it and oh this is going to go the distance 33 for Medell or from the sideline barking the instructions it is tough to be heard in here inside the last two minutes of this fourth period it might not be the final one. Bat is going to climb up. He's going to turn it. Or has he got a timeout? He gets vice gripped as the two Canadians put him in the clutch. He goes up and over. Hirschfield and then Medell finishes him off. And we see just what will be called here. It's going to be Medell the penalty. And that is a tough call. 
a penalty, defensive foul. And there's been a couple times where maybe Medell has come out second best. And you don't want to leave it necessarily on the floor, determined by the officials. They stay the course, though, the Canadians. And it will be four against three, Australia. And Caldwell just getting the tire change here now. But the play, as you remember, where Medell was going to go out of bounds, and he threw it back across the tires of Roddy Bat. That was one. And it looked as though that had been upended. He came in and just finished him off on that play. That's exactly what happened, but the referees assessed it as a penalty. So this now, the power play for Australia, and you expect them to take the lead once again. I've never seen a power play not converted. Not at this world-class level. I have, however, seen the shorthanded team score with it, but it's not going to be this time. It is Medell who will return to action for a piece on the floor. The give and the go. Steady in the buildup. Time, an issue. He's got to move, get across this line. He will, he lobs it forward, and inside of 12 seconds, he's done his business. And across one more time, we're level at 54. And looking right now to Kevin Orr on the bench to see what he wants them to do to execute. Potentially another turnover here. Whitehead is instrumental. When you've had him on the floor for Canada, he can be that disruptive force. Caldwell, and it's really Whitehead's size, particularly if Canada want to retreat and just occupy their own defensive zone area. That's where Whitehead's size, his presence, could be a difference. But this has been a wonderful performance for both of these teams. Naturally, there will be a winner and a loser at the end of this one. But they are both already guaranteed into that semifinal round. This is just, this is just bragging rights. And also setting up who will they play. That equally important as well. A great steering move there from Bat. Reaching in is Caldwell. He protects it, slows him up for a moment. Down is the Canadian. And Roddy Bat is just going to try and hold this one. And so this technical support coming across. So we'll just see. It'll be... Still possession, so it's a timeout for the equipment and needing to get Samard back upright. And just waiting for that, so a minute and eight seconds. Or trying to get the attention of his personnel. Dubberly, he looks like he's just having a stroll through the park right now. He's enjoying it. They have been here before, Australia. So Caldwell comes out. Whitehead is now on the floor of Valetsky. So is Hirschfield. And Medell, he has been there all day. Dead level. And in the hands of Riley Batts. Here he comes. He has made it look pretty easy so far. He goes across the line. He scores early. And he's trying to protect a last possession for Australia. Canada will want to try and score quickly if they can. But they've got to make the inbound. It's into Medell. He's got Roddy Bat in his wake now. He's going to power all the way up. Bond tries to get to him, but Medell will strike it. And he's leveled it again. 46.6. And here we go. It's Bat with his ball. Whitehead trying to take it from him. If they can hold him on the center line, come around, they've got a triple threat. It's lobbed into Bond. He is loose. And from here, they're going to try to force him from behind to score quickly. They do. And so 24.9 available to Canada. And you don't expect they're going to use all of it. It's going to be tough to be able to control that precisely. The inbound, it's to Medell. He is open, he's got speed, 
He has beaten back to the punch across that line. Canada must score to take this into extra time. Medell is calm. He looks to be getting the block he required. He's across the line, 4.2, and they've got to get back here. The inbound for Australia. It'll be Chris Braun responsible for it. Is he going to send it? It is going to go into Riley Bat. Bat is turned over. Can they be quick? They've got to be real quick from here. They're going to run out of time, and here we go. It's extra time for both of these nations as they have locked themselves into a thriller again. What a, <laughs> what a match. It is heart pumping, breath stopping. Full octane action in the wheelchair at rugby as Canada and Australia have locked themselves dead level after four periods. 56 apiece, three minutes of extra time coming up to determine the results. If we're still level, we're going to go deep. Defensive fouls, Canada with eight turnovers now equal. A couple more steals for the Canadians, and that's where you see they win that fourth period, 15-14, and they finally catch up. Never have they been in the lead. But it's like they say in racing, you only have to be in the lead once. And can they do it when they go across the tape line here now of three minutes of extra time? That, of course, is the question. Or have the Australians been able to just keep ahead for a reason. Are they good enough to go the distance to a 35th minute and be in control of the scoreline? It will be a battle for possession with another tip off. Whitehead is out there waiting. The Australians a little delayed to return to the floor. Just wanting to make sure they're entirely on the same page. Oh, it's been great. If you're just tuning in, this sport, it's marvelous. It came into the Paralympic Games in Sydney. And it just builds with momentum with each time it is played and equally each one of these occasions at the Paralympic Games. This is only the preliminary round. It's Bat and Whitehead. It'll be Bat over to Bond. And Bat has been upended right away. And he just asserts himself just a little too much, extends his body weight. And without his legs, of course, he's a little top heavy, and he's lost himself, his balance right away. Two seconds has gone. There's Will C in the background. He's a veteran of this Canadian side, 48 years young. Nazardum, he's 46. It's in to bat on the inbound from Bond. And they score first. 33 goals for number three. Whitehead right in the lap of 33 for Canada. And that'll be his 36th goal of the match. That is a wonderful pass from Whitehead. Forget the range. It's the accuracy and the timing. And out the captain, Ryan Scott. It's into Roddy Bat. He's got himself into a little bit of a snarl there, but Whitehead couldn't get to him early enough. Boletsky does her best. Whitehead will put the brakes on and stay with him. These four players, it's a log jam. And it looked like for a moment the Canadians had disrupted their flow. The Australians, though, are going to surf that one across the line. They take the lead one more time. Bond gets it. And you see that thrash at it from Zach Medell, almost enough to dislodge it. This is tight, in a difficult space for Whitehead. He was out of bounds, though. And tough to tell who was the last to touch it before Whitehead attempts it. 
It looked as though it was the Australians that touched it. And that's one of those problems where you put an angle and your player in a difficult place with where that pass was directed to. This could be a difference. Bond is going to have to release it again to bat. They have the lead. They're in control here. Whitehead is going to struggle to get him. He'll catch him, but just only a bit. Roddy Bat takes it across again. And the Australians are two ahead. <laughs> Mattel, his option is to the Canadian player. It's Hirschfield who will take it across this line. And that's going to be his fourth goal of the match. He's a 1.0 classification. That was right on the money. Too much space. You have to prevent Roddy Bat from getting out into these open areas. He will convert. It's the 60th goal of the match for Australia. His 35th. Hirschfield into Whitehead. He's a trucking. He's got Bond with him. Boletsky might score. She was an option there. That would have been her first. White had a rough ride, but what a bounce pass across, and Riley Bat thought he had it, but it's back within one. <laughs> and a different strategy here for Australia. Coming back, they've got Riley Bat already boxed up at the center line. Looks as though the captain will be making the inbound. Look at the Canadian bench. They feel every play. They are right in it. Erdem makes the play to Bond. Roddy Bat's trying to get open. Bond was going to try to catch him, but Modell stays with him. It's so tough to get the contact you want sometimes to maybe create a turnover. They might have just done enough to keep this play under wraps for a moment. He gets away again, though. Riley Bat. He's got Bond up front. They're looking for a steal, Canada. Inside of a minute. And look at this good work from the Australians. They open up this Canadian defense. They'll score again. They take that two-goal lead inside this last minute of extra time. Medell will look to score quickly. He has beaten Riley Bat to the punch. And now they desperately want a turnover. 42.5. It's within one. They're up and forcing the issue. Whitehead, it's long, the bounce for Bond. This is a good position here. We've got the whistle though. And this is trouble. We look at the official scoring play. Mattel gets the goal, is the last one. But what have the referees called here with 31 seconds to go? So it's just Mattel who goes down. So they do not give credit to the Australians for that score. They will, however, have to re-inbound it and reinsert this ball. You're seeing Kevin Orr now having discussion. So he wants a timeout. So is this, in fact, the moment for Canada to steal this inbound? They will go and discuss it. And to think that this is still not a match for a medal. This is just setting up the opportunity to put yourself into position. So much more wheelchair rugby to come at these Paralympic Games in Rio. It's inserted to bat. He gets a whack from Adele to start. It's over to Bond. They may have just done enough with that play there. They release Bond across this line. The Australians now up by two. And that 
That's huge. Long play up. They'll take it. And Samard quickly with that last conversion. That's his fifth. 19.2 remaining in this first overtime. It could be the only overtime as long as there is a leader. Roddy Bat, he's not going to panic. He will send it all the way. Is that going to be a turnover? Bond will get there. The timing precise right on the money. And that could very much seal it here. Canada through Zach Medell all the way down and he gets across the line, 2.2 seconds. It'll take a minor miracle to take this from the Australians. It has happened though before. Roddy Bat goes in to one, two. Can they get to it? Roddy Bat will control it, and Australia will win this one in extra time. And ahead by one at the end of three minutes. And what a victory it was. Wow. Group A play.